today on Local Color, we're going to talk about the Super Gala. We're going to talk about the second anniversary of the Green Line, all from our new set. This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for this program is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. A new night, no, same night, different time, 8.30, right. and a new set, and Ashley and I are here. We're going to tell you a little bit about some of the corn mazes we've got going on around here. My goodness. There's a lot. We've got a huge list. Well, you know, we know about Jones and Millington right. uh, over on Singleton Parkway. That now, do you go in on Highway 51? You go in on Singleton. Don't okay. go in on 51. 51 is the produce stand in the restaurant. All right. With the fried chicken on Monday. Oh, that's right. And then, um, you know, they've got the little stand that's over on Singleton Parkway. That's at 6880 Singleton Parkway. And, and you just go right over there. There's a huge area to park. And you can go to uh, the maze either in the daytime, which is not so haunted. You can go at <laughs> nighttime which is maybe not haunted. And then I think on the weekends it's haunted, but you need to check the websites on all of these things. Okay, but while you're at Jones, they still have the pumpkins for sale and maybe, do they have mums Corn, and pansies? Mums, They've got pansies. And, and the hay bales, hay bales. That you can do, and of course all the wonderful canned stuff. Well, and you know one cool thing about Jones, Miss Jones puts on her website the um, freshness chart, what's ripe. Oh. So you can go to her website any day, so and they might still have peaches. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so just go check out the website and see. You can make a day trip. Absolutely. And um, another thing, the Mid-South Corn Maze, which is over at the Agri Center. Yeah, that's the one I'm most familiar with. Yeah. Because it's it's in town, and I think they have they have the day mazes, and then they have the night mazes, and on <coughs> the weekends it gets haunted. Yes. Um, and they've also got um, the great aerial view. You can go to the website and check it out every year before... Um, they have the big unveiling, and you can kind of try to plot your path. You're going to get lost. You're still going to get lost. Yeah. I think this year it's a spider. Really? Yeah. That's really cool. Um, we went last weekend and took Hannah, and they've got this big, huge, inflatable pillow where you take your shoes off, and in your sock feet or bare feet, you just bounce. Like a bounce house? I'm, no. It's, it's an open-air, big, huge bouncy thing. I mean, it's huge, huge, huge. Like That's as big really as your cool. house. It's really cool. That's really cool. And you can also go back up to the Agri Center while you're that close Absolutely. and do all your fall landscaping planning. Absolutely. And there's an, you know, we're going to have it on our website right. and we're going to have some uh, information on the screen. There's tons of them. I just want to hit the highlights. The Todd Family Fun Farm is in Gibson County. It's in Dyer, Tennessee, and they've got a replica of uh, a, a mini farm that y the kids can go and explore. I think you told me they have a, a wooden cow. You, you can, can milk, milk it. You can, uh, you can milk the wooden cow. <laughs> Mama, I got splinters in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> milking a cow. And they've and got wooden eggs wooden you collect. Wooden eggs. So it's like a nice little tiny farm. It, but there's also, you can, you can go and tour. It's a working farm. Oh. So, you know, the big folks can also go and tour the entire farm as well. And they've got the, so they've got the corn maze, and then you've got the farm tours, and that's nice. I know. And, you know, that's what I like. It's fall, mm -hmm. and so you don't live in the middle of the country, pack a lunch, get in the car, and go check it out. That's right. And the these weather's are, too perfect. Yeah, to. these are all in the Mid-South. Um, another one that I wanted to tell you about was uh, Donnell Century Farms. Tell me what a Century Farm okay. is. Okay. This farm has been operational continuously for 175 years. All right. All right. I remember, so, I think I remember our friend Denny was telling us about yes, this. Yes. Remember Century Winery, which is a great place to stop. Yes. Um, on the way back from Jackson, Century Winery has been in the same family in existence for 120 years. That's amazing. I know. But this one's a real cool one, too. Donnell Farms, they have, and a lot of these have, a lot of the same things. They have the maze, they have the hay rides, 
they have the haunted maze, they have the pumpkins and everything for sale, but they all have their own little different flair right. and their own little different uh, thing that makes them special right. and unique. Right, and so many Mid-Southerners have family kind of flung out, so while you're going on your long weekend treks to go see them, you can plot your corn maze stops along Absolutely. the way. Absolutely. This one's cool. It's Wolfook Farms. Uh, it's Wolfook Marvelous Maze, and they run That's through <laughs> November the 4th. Uh, they're in Jackson, Tennessee. Now, instead of a corn maze, they have a sorghum maze. A sorghum maze? Look, Mississippi, it's sorghum. <laughs> I've always heard <laughs> sorghum molasses. That's, I don't know it any other I call way. Them, I call them uh, peonies, so, you know, oh, a lot of people call them peonies. No, my grandmother says peonies. I'm with you on that uh, Okay. And what do you call it? Sorghum. Sorghum. Sorghum molasses. That, that's what we're yeah, talking about, Yeah, what you right? make molasses out of. Right. Okay, instead of it being out of corn, it's out of sorghum. Uh, sorghum. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a poll after this absolutely, is over and see who says absolutely. what. Absolutely. But um, it's really cool because they also have... You know, you know when you collect the hay uh -huh. and it's in the great big round bales? Right. They also have a round hay maze. So they've they arranged have, the hay bales so you can... Yeah. Okay. So, All you right. know, the sorghum is real tall and you can't necessarily see over top of it and see through it. So the round bales of hay, it's not so... It's a little bit claustrophobic it, friendly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I like that. For people like me who <laughs> just tend to cut through the rows when I get frustrated and can't find my way up. <laughs> But um, then they also have a square hay bale maze. And, and the square hay bales, they have them stacked. And ever so often, they have a little love seat with an old quilt. And then they have a little tunnel where you have to crawl underneath nice. it. Okay. And you this know. one's in Jackson, right? Yes. I like this yes, one. Yes, okay. I do too. Now, you were telling me about... Yes, there's one down in Hernando. It's called the Cedar Hill Farm Cor Corn Maze. And I've been out there, and it's been years ago, but I remember it's just beautiful. Like, the location is great. You just drive down. Um, I think it's on uh, 50, Highway 51 South, and there's a little county road you cut off on. The directions are on our website. But um, it's beautiful. They've got the hay rides. They've got all the pumpkins and all that stuff, and I loved it out there. And see, me too. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys stay tuned. We're going to have more stuff coming up for you in a minute. Hey, I'm very excited to be here today with my friend and the Executive Director of Literacy Mid-South, Kevin Dean, and he's going to tell us about a wonderful event that you guys have coming up, um, and it's called Super Gala. It is. I love it. Tell me how you came up with the idea. Okay, it's a superhero-themed event, and um, every we're celebrating superheroes. Um, we wanted a really fun event. Um, so we, we came up with the, the idea for, for celebrating superheroes. You know, a lot of people have learned to read uh, through comic books. Desmond Tutu actually was not allowed to read. His dad wouldn't let him read, and he, read, he learned to read by, by reading comic books. So, the, you know, kids still think that comic books are cool. They think that the Hulk and the Avengers are really cool right now. So why not celebrate that and, get, and find one more way to get people reading? Um, I, don't, I don't care what they read as long as they're reading. So. Right. And it's a superhero thing to do, to, to kind of help stamp out illiteracy Absolutely. in the Mid-South. Yeah. Well, what can folks expect at the party? Well, it's a costume party. So, um, Which I love. Last year, we had all kinds of superheroes, super villains that came. A lot of them I didn't even know, but they were really obscure characters that people made their own costumes. Some of them were homemade and they spent hundreds of dollars, I'm sure, on them. <laughs> um, but we're, we're gonna have a DJ. Uh, DJ Little Egg Roll is coming back this year. He <laughs> nice. was really, he was, <laughs> he was great. He was really popular last year, so we're bringing him back. And then um, Celtic Crossing is providing the food. Last year they did fish and chips, and everybody mm -hmm. loved that. Um, we have beer, uh, Celtic Crossing has donated beer, and then we're gonna have wine. And um, the Memphis College of Art uh, students, we have them come and decorate for us. So last year they did all kinds of weird, crazy comic book um, stands, and, and this year they're doing huge comic books um, at big 
six foot tall comic books to put around. And you uh, said they have like a skyline set up around the dance we floor. We do. We're going to have a skyline around the dance floor, and they're big buildings made out of big refrigerator boxes. Nice. And they're really, really fun. And there's also, a, is it a live auction or a silent auction? We, we have a silent auction. Okay. Yep. And, and we have a lot of, we had a lot of good items. Last year, people were on the dance floor and they didn't bid as much. So we, they ah. can go and bid and get things for a really good price. Last year, people walked away with some steals. So. Nice, nice. Well, aside from the Super Gala, mm -hmm. there's another great opportunity that y'all have coming up. And y'all have this come up every other month, in fact. You have the adult tutor training, which is something I've been doing. I just recently signed on and I love it. So tell me more about that. Okay. Um, well, we have 550 students that we serve every year. They're adults, 18 and over, who can't read um, or they, they can't read above a sixth grade reading level. Typically, they're at about a first or second grade reading level. Um, they can't read their prescription bottles. They can't, they can't uh, read to their children. So they, they want to learn and they want to be able to apply for jobs and things like that. So um, each or every other month, we have a, a it's about a day long tutor training for um, new tutors and the volunteers. We are we only have a staff of eight and um, 250 volunteers work with the 550 students we have we and, serve. And when do people need to look forward to that? Is that coming up on, is it, it's October, it's, it's October 27th, right? 27th, yeah, and you can go to our website and download the, the application, you just send it in and then we'll contact you about coming to the training. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for being here today to talk about these events. I'm really looking forward to Super Gala. I'm, I've been picking out my costume. <laughs> It'll be a big reveal. Oh, I can't wait. Y'all, um, tune in and see what's coming up next with these great art exhibits and beer festivals. I'm here with Rebecca Daly from the Shelby Farms Green Line, and I cannot believe it's been two years. This is the second anniversary of the Green Line. It's hard to believe. You know, it just seems like it opened yesterday. You were telling me earlier that you would pay 50 feet and people would be there on their bikes ready to go for the next 50 feet. I love that. People have been so ready for it, and it has been such a celebrated trail and it's so well used as well. And so for the second birthday, we are throwing two birthday parties to celebrate the wonderful connections that the trail has made. And it's just one big birthday party for the whole community to come out to. And it's called Bikes, Bands, and Block Party. Close. Bands, Bands bikes, bikes, and, and Block Party. <laughs> and it's going to be at high, 477 High Point Terrace on uh that will be October the 13th mm -hmm. from noon to 6, and it is free. It is free. Free parking, free admission. Come, have fun. Mm -hmm. Now, the trail starts at Tillman, and, oh, well, it all depends on where you get on, where it starts. Which way you're going. But it's, <laughs> it's from Tillman to Shelby Farms. That's right. And it's like, what, seven miles? Just about. And it's seven miles of beautiful trail in the middle of the city that most people don't realize is there until they get on it. You actually did the rails to trails thing, right? You Correct. used the uh, existing rail bed mm -hmm. that was no longer in use and made the bike trail. That's right. But now, do you have to bike or can you walk as well? You can absolutely walk. You can jog. Anything that uh, will float your boat. Oh, I love that. So who are you going to have playing? Do you know who you're going to have playing? We have a great lineup of local musicians, and we're actually going to have some people out from Opera Memphis as well doing a little pop-up opera. <laughs> so we are excited. They're all over town this month. They are, but we're excited <laughs> to connect the community to them and them to the, uh, the Green Line community as well. And now tell me about the nighttime event you're going to have. And that's going to be at Shelby Farms. That's correct. We'll move the party from High Point Terrace down the Green Line back into the park. And we'll be having a moonlit concert just outside the Visitor Center overlooking Patriot Lake. And Aww. you can get food and drinks and just have fun. So what is the proper protocol? If I wanted to pack my own picnic basket and bring my own chairs and blanket, is that okay? That's okay. Awesome. And we'll I also like have that. food available. But And now there's no admission. You just pay $5 to park and you're in. That's it. And what time does it start? It starts at 7 p.m. And uh, about a couple of hours, 7 couple to 9, hours. 7 well, to 10? About 9 o'clock is when okay. we'll cut that off. Um, I want to come out because 
I love the horses and not a lot of people know about them. Mm -hmm. So I, I know about the amphitheater. Mm -hmm. I know about the horses. I know about the trails. But I bet you've got some other things that are kind of tucked away that a lot of people don't know about. Can we come out there and shoot sometime? Absolutely. We'd love to have you. I'm so glad you came. Please come back. Well, thank you for having me, Mamie. And, you know, I want to tell you guys about some other events that are coming up. One of my favorite, have you ever heard about the door adoption for Memphis Heritage? I haven't. It's really a cool event. They uh, take reclaimed doors and adopt them out to artists who go and paint them and repurpose them into another event. But go ahead and check out the other uh, events coming up this week, and we're going to get caught up on the green line. All right. Dean Dayo from the Music Foundation, and I'm so glad you could be here. And tell us about Memphis Means Music Month. Well, thank you, Mamie. Uh, it's an idea that came a couple years ago from the Music Foundation. We wanted an opportunity to have everybody in the city celebrate Memphis music so we can promote it to the outside but you know we're close to it and we tend to forget about some of our assets and, and take it for granted. Absolutely. So this is a great chance for us to the whole city to kind of rally around know that it's more than just entertainment it's business too it's economics for the city and just a great chance for everybody to get there and promote Memphis music. Well tell me about the event that's coming up October the 13th at the Cannon Center with Stax the uh, stacks in the Memphis Sound. Yeah, uh, and that's just an example of a number of the things. Throughout the month, there's, well, you know, every month, every week here, there's always something going Absolutely. on in Memphis music. But here's a chance. Stacks is one of the biggest resources that we've had in the past here in Memphis music. And it's just a, a way for them to, to do what they do, but then we'll promote that and make sure the whole city at this point knows what Stacks is doing. The commercial appeal, has done great publicity for it. Um, all We do a, a nice calendar, we do blogs. Uh, actually, one of the things that's happening this year that we're really excited about for the very first time is we've, we've contacted um, Memphis artists that are touring right now. We have some that are in Europe, we have some all over the United States, and we said, for the month of October while you're touring, tweet and and do like your that. Twitters and, and blog, and then make sure you take some pictures of you on stage with Memphis t-shirts yeah, like and that. then send them to us and we'll put them out and and talk to everybody because they're every day they're around the world talking about Memphis music. Well you know you hit on it and collaboration is my favorite thing. I love the fact that you know you guys obviously support Memphis musicians in a big way but there are so many other people that do mm -hmm. and there are so many other events that do and there are so many other organizations that do you were telling me about uh, the Lipscomb and Pitts breakfast yeah great example they every month Lipscomb and Pitts has this breakfast club it's for CEOs and, and corporate leaders in Memphis they bring in a speaker from the outside they do a, a fabulous event and so for the month of October they said how about we have a Memphis artist play music while everybody is eating breakfast and I love it. we'll sp spend our time talking about Memphis music and, and that's just a good way for them to take an event that they already do but kind of convert it and make it make it part of Memphis music during the month of October. Well, and you know, you guys started in a small way doing Memphis Music Week, mm -hmm. and now you've blown it up <laughs> into Memphis Music Month, and we've already talked about uh, the Memphis Symphony, who was supposed to do the uh, Symphony Week, and they've blown it up into a month, right. and it's like, and 30 you guys days are of just opera having, that you have now. Yeah, the so 30 we're... days of opera, and you guys are just having like a battle of the, a battle of the musical talent here going on, and we are the ones that are actually the recipients of that amazing thing. The symphony orchestra is going to do uh, Opus One with DJ Red Eye, <laughs> and I love that. That's going to be uh, Thursday, October 18th at 7:30 at uh, 9:15 East Mclemore, and 
t I know who did the medieval steel, but you've got to tell me about the medieval steel. Well, I'm not uh, sure I know a lot about that one. Now, I appreciate all the genres of Memphis music, but I don't, don't understand all of them. And, and uh, I guess that must be heavy metal times. So. Heavy metal. <laughs> so but it's it's that's not Katrina a, from our office. She's our heavy heavy metal expert. <laughs> and it's going to be at the it's going to be at the Daisy. Yes, right. And it's a uh, on October 28th. So you know we've got all kinds of music all over the spectrum and all the venues are also a part of this as well, right? Absolutely. I and mean, then of course we end the month with the River Arts Festival. So downtown South Main, just, you know, a great festival and m multiple stages, Memphis music on all the stages. It's just, you know, just a great way to end Memphis music. And talk month. about another great collaboration. You've got uh, uh, the Memphis Acoustic Music Association. Mm -hmm. What's on the best of the best? The Memphis Songwriters Association, the best of the best. The Blues Foundation. The Blues Foundation, mm -hmm. the Music Foundation, mm -hmm. and they all bring together their new talent and, and their exciting talent and share it with the community, as in the Mid-South community. I'll tell you one thing that I am really excited about is the railroad tour how in the world did that come about? That's an honor. Yeah, and again, just again, it happens to fall into October, thank goodness, but here's Willie Nelson and, and a, a band of, the band of horses and a whole group of people that are riding around the country on vintage on a vintage train in these railroad cars and doing performances, and Memphis happened to be on, the, on their stop list, and thank goodness it's in October, and it's a good way, again, to promote Memphis music because uh, even Willie Nelson and the Cowboys, you know, you know, Memphis music was a part of I what mean, got them there. I mean, one of 16 cities, that's quite an honor. Mm -hmm. And it's a great venue, too. I mean, it's not often a place that we go for live music. Right. And I think Pat Mitchell Worley's actually said the same thing. We could even do a whole show just yes. on the venues. And I think this oh my is one goodness, of the yeah. And happy birthday the to the Bill Street Caravan, 16th birthday. That's right. right. Now, listen, show. ending up the month with the Mahalia Jackson <laughs> gospel, that is going to be cool. That's at the Germantown Performing Arts Center on the 27th. All, and that's just a great example. And one other thing that ha has happened already this month, but we just a great example of, of Memphis and where it fits in the music world is there's there's a, a French opera star, Mar Marie Bernard, who could live anywhere in the world. I mean, she's an uh, internationally known opera star. She lives in Harbor Town. Yeah. And she just did a performance on Harbor Town mm -hmm. last week. And and but and she's always on the road someplace. But where she wants to live, she grew up in Paris of all places. And where does she want to live? She wants to live in Memphis, Tennessee. And you Tennessee. know what, Dean? Thank you for coming and being the first guest on our new set. That's and great. thank <laughs> you for doing this and for and for reminding us what rich musical heritage we have and for celebrating our musicians for a month. Please come back and see us. You bet. And Memphis means music. That's right. <laughs> You know, we've got tons more listed on the website, so please go to wkno.org slash local color to see a full list of everything that's going on with the dates and times. One more thing before we go, I wanted to tell you about the Southern Festival of Books and it's coming up this weekend and if you're in the mood for a quick road trip over to Nashville, this is kind of this is kind of a big deal. There's lots of Southern art, uh, Southern authors, some that are actually Memphis natives. We've got Susan Cushman, who's written Circling Faith with a few friends, and of course Paul and Angela Knipple, who are food enthusiasts. They had World in a Skillet, and now they've come up with traditions and evolutions in today's Southern kitchen. And there's lots of other nationally touring authors that you may have heard of, Gillian Welch, um, Ron Rash, A.J. Jacobs. So that's a wonderful, worthwhile event. Well, and another thing before we forget, before we forget, we need to get our tickets to go to the Zoo Boo. <laughs> because Zubu. it's coming up, I do too, it's at the Memphis Zoo. It's coming up the 19th through the 28th. Mm. And, um, you know, you can dress your entire family up. Right. I love it because you can go to the, you can take your kids to a safe environment. It's beautiful. Let them visit all the food stations. There's the Dracula's dance. Nice. You know, I know, I love that. And getting to go to the zoo at night is a treat. It really is. It's magic. Mm -hmm. It's very magic. It is. Um, so, have you and Kevin gone to the zoo before? Yes. I love it. I love um, Saturday afternoon day trips over there. It's kind of a nice way to kill some time. Did you go to the, have you ever been to the zoo, boo? 
Um, it's been years. They've since got I've been the cauldrons there. with the little bubbling, you know, bubbling uh, uh, dry ice coming out, and nice. all of the animals, especially the creatures of the night. It's the best time to go because the creatures of the night are awake. Right. You know, and they've got the kitty rides, kitty rides going, and I mean the entire zoo is open. And they've got candy stations. Oh throughout. yeah, 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 all over the place. Face painting, ev you know, everything. Concessions. There, there is actually a place where you, it's a haunted house. So you know, the rest of it is. It's family PG, friendly, right? But then there's the PG nine. Right. You know. Thank you guys. Welcome to our new set. Go out and enjoy your local color and come back and see us next week.